Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. Remember how excited everybody was when it was announced that CNN was going to try to start their own streaming initiative? Me neither. Now, a number of the new voices of black media have already touched upon this, most notably Your World, Tari and Rain, and others. But of course, being the professor, you know I gotta throw my two cents in regardless. Now, this is not going to be a post-mortem like with Black News Channel. We chronicled the pathetic decline and demise of that toilet bowl all along, so it was absolutely no surprise to anyone when they went belly up. Well, Mark Lamont Schill was certainly caught off guard, but then again, who couldn't get one over on that clown? But CNN doesn't deserve that kind of in-depth analysis from me because, hey, it's CNN. Then again, what did they think was going to happen? They spent all that money, at least $100 million for starters, all so that they could try and fail to have a half-baked streaming service. You know, the operative term there being service, I have no idea who's served by CNN's patented brand of slop. And look who the hell it was that they got to be the anchors for their little streaming service. An anchor's supposed to be holding you down. These guys, they don't hold anything down. Chris Wallace, that piece of flotsam and jetsam, who floated in from the Fox News sewer... See, CNN still continuing their pathetic efforts to try to be Fox News light, trying to be a somewhat more sanitized, less ostentatiously white nationalist version of CNN, still taking cheap shots at black folks, holding up the white pride line, but, you know, we're not going to go full Tucker Carlson. So that's why they bring in Chris Wallace. See, see, we're, we're, we're migrating to those guys. Biden's looking for Biden Republicans, and we're looking for CNN conservatives. So how'd that work out? Are the red state reprobates from places like Fox News and Newsmax and OAN and the rest of the rectum of the media world, have they started flocking to CNN yet? Did they flock to get themselves a subscription to CNN Plus? And of course, he brought his usual BS with him. I can't imagine anybody who was glad to see this clown coming. All of the naked race baiting this jerk is done. But then again, he wasn't alone. You also had Don Lemonade, who was supposed to be starting a show. He has some sort of male co-host. God only knows what that would have looked like. And let's not forget Jamel Hill and Kari Champion. Apparently, these two are supposed to be the media equivalent of Girls Trip. What, Angela Rye with lettuce and tomatoes on the side wasn't available? It's the personification of the white media's usual tactic. Do the same thing, just more of it. All of these people who nobody really cares about, all of these people who the only thing that they're good for is kissing the butts of whatever white media executives that they're trying to suck up to. These individuals will make it a point that they will scrupulously stick to only criticizing the targets who the white media says they can criticize, and everybody else is off limits. Of course, the black community always gets brought in for regular abuse from these folk. Especially black men in particular, that's something that the Jamel Hills and the Don Lemonades, it's a guilty pleasure for them that they never get tired of. I even hear that Jake Tapper, of all people, was supposed to have a literally book review show. A book review show. Well, if nothing else, Jake Tapper's the first person in human history to have written more books than he's read, so that's a novelty in and of itself. Now, one of the things on their little promo video on YouTube that they had was this big collage, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, wow, you guys are making a very good argument against yourselves. Talk about self-defeating programming. Dang near in the middle of the screen, you got John Lewis Goodtwebber, and you got Don Lemonade. This is all, of course, supposed to be appealing mostly to white left-of-center people. You want to make sure that you've got some friendly programming that's not going to be putting them off. Nothing that's going to be making them feel uncomfortable because that's who you're trying to appeal to. But that's not something that we can afford to take lightly because what they're doing is they're taking individuals who fight against our interest, individuals who are doing things that are not going to threaten or going to otherwise put white supremacy on notice. And these are the guys who they put out from, we can talk about these guys because they're safe targets. Give me a break. And when I see Ruth Bader Ginsburg... You're going to be sitting here actually having a doggone streaming service with her and all the racism that she was low-key supporting and her racist pals like Antonine Scalia that she was best buds with. This is supposed to be what passes for a streaming service? What the hell are they serving? 
They got a collage of all this content that they were planning to feature. Who in God's name was any of this for? All I see is just one big wall and nothing. Who was this meant to appeal to? Well, apparently, no one, because it didn't even appeal to the management of their own parent company. Oh, and by the way, for any of you folk out there, I know there's a few of y'all who basically are of a mindset where you'll say B1. Meanwhile, you're up here flirting, playing footsie with all of these other elements over here. So for you guys who are like that, who have that kind of temperament, please don't feel sorry for these clowns who have found themselves suddenly unemployed. Warner Brothers slash Discovery, they're simply looking for a more efficient way to put together a propaganda machine of their own. They haven't abandoned the idea at all. This is just the usual bickering and infighting that these white supremacist elements do as they compete to see who will wield the knife that they use to cut our throats. But the reason for this morning's briefing isn't about dancing on the grave of a failed white media startup. Those are as common as table salt, though the white media pretends as if it's very rare. If a black enterprise of some sort, of any sort of, even if it's one that's owned by white power, but it's supposed to be geared toward black people, they'll go ahead and give that big headline because what they want to try to project is the idea of, well, if you try to do programming for black people, it'll fail. And we want to make sure black is associated with failure, even if it's one of our own sock puppet organizations. But with the white ones, on the other hand, well, you know, that's just the usual ebb and flow of business. The point is that this is a case study in how the propaganda arm of white supremacy works. The bad guys were willing to plow over $100 million into a streaming service that never even got off the ground. That was just money they threw away. And according to the New York Slimes, the original plan had been to spend over a billion dollars on CNN Plus in the first four years alone. Now, I want you to think about that. You got white capital that was fully prepared to plow a billion dollars into this thing, a billion plus over the course of the next four years. That's $250 million a year just for a streaming app. Well, I'm sure that the folks over at Warner Brothers Discovery are relieved that at least they didn't lose a billion dollars on this. They got to save themselves $900 million or however much it was. But if this profligate orgy of spending sounds a little bit familiar to you, it should. The Asian businessman Shahid Khan, he shoveled over $50 million just to start the now dead black news channel. $50 million. And that was just to start the thing. $50 million plus just to get 4,000 viewers. Talk about a lousy return on investment. But this is not at all unusual, it's not unheard of. When Rupert Murdoch funded the start of Fox News Channel, he plowed over a billion dollars into that thing. He spent a hell of a lot of money before that thing became profitable. But the lesson to be taken away from that is white media believes in putting resources behind the things that they try to create, they try to manufacture. They want something to be a thing, they believe in putting real resources behind it. Roger Ailes, who was the mastermind behind Fox News, I told you about how he had been planning some sort of right-wing network ever since the early 70s in the Nixon administration. And as I told you, Roger Ailes, he knew that the right-wing nuts needed their own exclusive media. But the problem was they hadn't yet politically matured to the point where they wanted it. Now, the lesson for us to be taken away from all this is the bad guys had the luxury of sitting on top of the accumulated wealth that we had generated so that they can hit or miss. They can go ahead and throw a $50 million of the wealth that we generated into Black News Channel or $100 million into a damn to fail CNN streaming service or what have you. They can afford to do that. They can just sit back and do nothing if they choose. Well, at least for a while. My question is, do you think we have that luxury? White supremacy is a war with us. Their propaganda arm is the main mouthpiece speaking against us, and they are very, very well-funded. That's the bad news. Now here's the good news. As you see with BNC and CNN+, Plus, this war isn't going to be won by whomever has the biggest war chest. It's not going to be won by whomever has backers with the deepest pockets. It's going to be won by whomever has the most interest. In winning. It is far more important the quality of those who are backing you up as opposed to necessarily the quantity of their bank account. When it comes to the white media, there's plenty of stupid money out there. But the question for black people is, where's the smart money? Especially when it comes to black folks in our interests, where's the smart money for black people at? 
it's on us. That's why we're not changing our agenda. We're not changing the message one bit. We cannot and we should not speak to the lowest common denominator amongst us. We can't do EBT, uh, I mean BET type content. We can't put out material that appeals to your lowest instincts and encourages dysfunctional behavior among us. We can't continue the old black media's treasonous tradition of focusing on sports, celebrity, gossip, religion, and who's beefing with whom. You've heard me say a million times that as the black media, part of our mission is to take control of the social discourse within the black community. But as you recall, there's also a second part of our mission that I may not mention as often, but which is no less important. Our job as the black media, as your media, is to elevate the debate. That's what we're about. That's what we've been doing for at least 15 years. The most of you have seen us on YouTube anyway. We're not going to go back to conditioning you to be overgrown children, which is what the shuck and jive clowns on white-owned radio stations do, or tell you that your job is to be a loyal human sacrifice for the DNC with nothing in return, like the roly-poly Martins or the TV nuns, or I mean ones. We forced those clowns to change what they were saying. We didn't change our message one iota, and we're not going to. CNN, like BNC before, it stands testament to the fact that these white corporations, they can give you a platform, but what they can't give you is legitimacy. That they cannot do. A hundred million dollars can get you some production value, a nice little, very professional-looking sound stage in some studio somewhere. It can also get you a few cable news cast-offs. But what it's not going to get you is people to look at you and decide you're saying something that they absolutely must listen to. There's a lesson for us in that as well. For my part, I'll say this. The most perversely ironic thing about CNN Plus was its name. It didn't add anything to the media landscape any more than CNN or Fox News or MSNBC does. However, I gotta admit that seeing them go belly up does feel like a... Plus, good day and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Loke Thies, Miss Debbie, Nyan Pharmacy, Alfonso Sullivan, and Radaya Bay. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.